Thank you all so much for being here. Uh, I've looked forward to this concert for longer than I can remember, but just uh, it means so much that you're here. Uh, I really hope that you enjoy every minute of it. Uh, before we begin, of course, if you haven't done so already, be sure to silence your, your cell phones, your pagers, I guess, if you have any. And uh, well, uh, old people here, so you know, there might be some. So, first song in, I'm hot, baby. I'm hot. Uh, baby humans, adult humans, uh, and my friend Tony, I think he's somewhere over there. So, if you could, notorious for being noisy, so if you could please just shut up. So, <laughs> anyway, so the reason we're all here is uh, the re release of my third uh, piano album called Chirality. Now, if you're not familiar with the term, chirality is a property of asymmetry, particularly used in science, particularly chemistry, actually, when used in molecules. So chirality is used to describe an object whose mirror image is non-identical. So let's, you know, let's try an example. Your hand. In fact, chirality comes from the Greek chiro, which does mean hand or handedness. Your hand is an asymmetrical object, meaning you cannot draw a line of symmetry through your hand. So if everyone could please raise your left hand, okay? And then let's imagine that we put a mirror in between this hand, right? The image we'd get is roughly this, right? So if you raise your right hand. Now, if everyone could try and take this image, this mirrored image of your left hand, and put it over this, do they match up? No, they do not. No matter how many times you rotate them, they do not match up. Chirality. <laughs> so now that you understand, hopefully, chirality, you'll see how I put it in music. So in chemistry, if we go back to chemistry, chiral molecules have mirror images that are not only non-identical in image, but in functionality as well. So in all of the songs in the new album, there is a melody, and it's mirrored inversion. The two are non-identical in appearance, like if you were to see me, they look different when I play them, but they also sound different, and they evoke different emotions. So in each one of my pieces, the goal was to see how I could make these two inversions work together. Work together and, and also show what emotions they provoke. So when you, you listen, when you listen to these new pieces, try and find the melody or the musical phrases, and then try and listen to for the mirrored inversion. So this next piece is called Slipstream.
Thank you very much. Appreciate that. Now, these next two pieces are going to be from my first album, Synesthesia. Synesthesia. I really like using obscure titles for the albums, as you can tell. So, synesthesia is actually a psychological condition in which a person visualizes colors upon hearing sounds or music. So, for example, someone who has synesthesia, a synesthete, would hear fireworks and visualize red, yellow, bright colors associated with that. Or maybe they'd hear a very sad song and picture like a, a green or a puke brown or something. Uh, whatever, I don't know, puke's never really that happy, so maybe it's, you know, so anyway. Um, so, I don't have songs named puke, by the way. So, so, in this album, my goal was to name each song a certain color. And this is based off the emotions that I felt from the song. I'm not myself a synesthete, but I tried to put myself in that mindset. So, when I hear maybe, or when I think of the color cobalt, this deep blue color, I think of maybe something luscious, moving, and maybe even melancholy and strong. But when I, on the other hand, when I think of gold, I think of something, you know, shiny and shimmering and kind of mystical. So, maybe you'll feel the same way. Maybe you'll see other colors.
That's water, by the way. Very strong water. Thank you very much. This next, these next two pieces are from my second album, Reverie, which I actually got to release at a concert last year. I think some folks might have been there, so you know. Uh, so anyway, uh, Reverie is actually something. It's more. It was more personal album. It was because um, ever since I was a kid, I was always a daydreamer. I had trouble focusing, but I don't know. I was always creating something in my head. I'd nod off and in class often, and I understand that I may have some past and maybe even a present professor in this room, but just to know, just to be clear, not in your class. So, <laughs> just to be clear. Anyway, so Reverie, the album, was just kind of like a musical interpretation of my daydreams. I 
the melodies that I got from this album came from when I studied abroad in Spain, and when I, I don't know, when I'm driving on 285 with tons of traffic. It just, it happens, and it's when I'm daydreaming that these melodies come, so that's what I wanted to do with Reverie. And in fact, it was a very engaging album. I really loved writing this music for it. So the first selection is Head in the Clouds, next is Imagination.
Thank you. Thank you very much. Now, you know, being a songwriter, you, you, you have to study what it takes to, you know, be a good songwriter. And that's, you know, in my experience, I've, I've studied under amazing, amazing musicians and learned the ins and outs of maybe writing a good melody, coming up with a catchy chord progression, and learning everything about music theory that you're able to stand. So, but one of the best pieces of advice that I've gotten from someone, and he's a good buddy of mine, is that when you write music and you play music, tell a story. Tell a story. Pull the audience in. Bring them somewhere with your music. Make your music an amazing movie, a gripping novel that doesn't let go. Tell a story. And with this mindset, I've written this album in a completely different perspective. It's, it's much more engaging, it's much more emotional, it's much more, it's much more personal. Because this idea of telling a story with your music makes you want to just keep listening. And it makes you want to see what's next. And it makes you listen rather than just maybe have it in the background. You know, it's telling something with your music. So I do hope you enjoy some of these new pieces from Chirali.
This next piece is very special to me. It's very personal. In fact, I'd like to dedicate it to someone who is extremely important to me. Someone whose charisma, someone whose energy, whose life force, whose love and support for me and my music went forever. Forever and beyond. I'd like to dedicate this song to my grandfather, Paul Trainer.
Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. So, sorry, getting a little worked up here. Okay. So, before I play this uh, last song, I I'd like to thank you all again so much for being here. Your being here is just wonderful, wonderful support for the arts. The arts needs people like you. Whether it be a song you download, a concert you visit, or a young student that you encourage to continue taking guitar lessons, or piano lessons, or drum lessons, or whatever. Your presence here fuels the industry of the arts. Whether it's music, whether it's art, whether it's dance, whether it's theater. And I think we can all agree that the arts is really suffering lately. So your being here shows me that there is more hope out there. There is more support. There is more motivation for me to keep doing what I do. And I understand that it's hard. It can be sometimes, absolutely. But when one person comes up to me, or shoots me an email, or whatever, you know, and compliments me on what they hear, and tells me that it moved them, that is my motivation to keep working. How can I say no to that? How can I say no to what I love to do? Thank you so much for being here. And I do hope that you enjoy the final song, Chirality. I'm all sweaty.
you. Thank you all very much. Uh, just a, a couple of things before we leave. I, I want to share this because I'm really excited about it. A lot of folks are asking, you know, what's next now that this is over? Uh, I've actually gotten in touch with a, a family friend of ours and the artistic director for the Gateway uh, Productions Company, uh, Sandra Hughes. And she has done 30, she's a year, 30 years worth of screenwriting, uh, spoken word, uh, directing. She's won a regional Emmy for her work. And I'm so thrilled that I will be collaborating with her next spring for a CD that is funded by the city of Atlanta. That's going to be, thank you, thank you. And the CD will be uh, uh, 10 original songs, 10 original piano compositions, plus original spoken word by Sandra Hughes. If you follow me on my website, the album will be, public, uh, will be open to the public, and there will be uh, two performances at the uh, Mask Center where she works. Uh, so just keep an eye on that. But otherwise, now we are able to go and be merry and go to the reception. There are drinks, and I want to thank everyone who helped contribute to this reception. I want to thank everyone who helped contribute to this concert, who let me do this here, the music department here, everyone here. Just thank you so much. And like I said, your presence, it doesn't feel like it, but it fuels the industry of the arts. Keep doing this. Whether you buy an album, whether you download a song, whether you do you encourage, like I already said that. But, you are fuel in the industry, and you keep people like me wanting to do what they do. So thank you. I'll see you in the lobby.